Hey guys, how are you all doing? And welcome back to the channel. And I'll be honest, if someone told me that they would make the K2C the first rifle that you begun with in Iron Sight, I'd agree with that. But welcome to part 2 of my Road to Gold, where today I'm going to be looking at the K2C rifle. Now for a small little bit of history, the K2 originated in South Korea. And overall, the reason why the K2 was created was primarily because of their limited stock on M1 Garands and M16s that was supplied by the Americans. Now they did want to manufacture M16s and M1 Garands for their own truth, however expenses were way too high at the moment. But after years of successful tests, in 1984, the K2 rifle was put in service, and still remains in service to this very day by South Korea. However, with warfare advancing, the K2 had to evolve at the moment, so an upgraded version called called the K2C was added with Picatinny reels and that was to compensate for all the new attachments that were coming out at the time. In game, the K2C is far different than its real counterpart. For example, the actual K2 rifle is only capable of semi-automatic fire, while the one given in game to all players is fully automatic. Now overall, I would classify the K2 rifle as a very average weapon. It is fair when it comes to damage numbers, but it is consistent amongst different ranges. The recoil pattern is very easy to control and extremely predictable, so middle range targets won't be a problem when it comes to the using this weapon. Now the shots to kill are very consistent when it comes to this weapon. You won't notice a single difference when it comes to 5 and 15 meters, requiring 3 headshots, 4 chest shots, 4 shots to the arm, and 5 shots to the leg. Again, this is consistent all the way up to 15 meters, and you'll only notice a difference at 20 meters, where it'll take 4 shots to the head, 4 shots to the chest, 5 shots to the arm, and 6 shots to the leg but you shouldn't be engaging from that range anyway. Some of the good things to know about the K2C is the rate of fire, 720 rounds, which is pretty good, but you might want to be careful because at the time of recording, there are no options for extended mags, so you're only limited to 30 rounds in your magazine and 90 in reserve, which is only three spare mags. Now this goes into our next category, reloading. Now, if you don't have the skill quick reload equipped, expect it to take 2.2 seconds as long as you keep one round in the chamber. However, if you're reckless and you empty your magazine dry, expect it to take 3.2 seconds until you're able to fire your next shot. Now personally, I do tend to use quick reload a lot on many of my other weapons. However, with something like this, I think you can really get away with not having quick reload. The only tip that I would say, just make sure you reload as much as possible because you really want to stay away from that 3.2 second reload. Other than that, I really think you can probably experiment with some other builds and not using quick reload on this, because 2.2 seconds, that's not that bad. Now for those who really want to get into the action really fast and you do have the skill quick reload equipped, you'll be really pleased, because for a short reload, it'll take roughly 1.4 seconds until you're able to fire your next shot. However, if you empty your magazine dry, it'll take 2.15 seconds. Again, that's not that bad. Now another good thing to know about the K2 rifle is how fast you'll actually be moving with this weapon. Now in the assault rifle department, I think this is on the high side, but you move at 92% of your base max speed. That is extremely fast. That is probably, that's not that far from the SMGs. And again, I think this is on the high side on assault rifles. So that's actually a really good note. Now that that's all out of the way, let's actually talk about the looks and the skins of the K2C. Now if you're not willing to spend any money and you want a unique skin, expect to spend 40,000 GP. This is not recommended if you do plan on getting gold, however, if you do get a unique skin out of a loot crate, that's a bonus, but I'd recommend just staying with the K2 that you have right now and work your way to the gold and save up as many GP as possible. Now hopefully you've been saving up your chips, because if you want any other skin, expect to spend around 250 to 500 chips. Now some of the skins can only be earned in the loot crate, so again, hopefully RNG Jesus is on your side. Lastly, there is a legendary skin called the Overlap K2C. Now, you can only get this by meeting the three requirements for this weapon. One of them being the Celebration SVD, which you can only get from three out of the seven supply crates listed here. The other one is a Chrome M4. I believe the bundle is still out, so you could probably catch a deal on the Chrome M4. And the other one is an Arctic G36C, which I think you can pay for about 40,000 GP. Now, for my personal experience about the Overlap K2C, now I do know that it is just a skin with a unique reload animation, but for some odd reason, the gun just feels so good. And if I actually had the option to choose between gold and the Overlap, I'd pick the Overlap hands down. The weapon just feels so satisfying to use and the reload is just good. It's probably a placebo effect, but I don't know, I just love the Overlap K2C. Now I summarized exactly how I feel about this weapon in the beginning and I just want to get into more detail about that now. The weapon is just extremely average, even though it is very good when it comes to mid-range engagements, far range not so much and there is a lot of weapons that can definitely out damage, for example the AK and the Scar H, however you should already expect that when it comes to using this. But this weapon is not bad by any means. It does shine in many other departments, but it does have a few weakness, specifically when it comes to close quarters. But however, you should already expect SMGs dominate the close quarters arena, so you do want to stay out of that one. I'd definitely say the sweet spot when it comes to using this weapon is just stay in mid-range engagements and take advantage of your recoil control, because that's where I seem to be winning a lot of my gunfights in. 
Now what's going to hurt you the most when it comes to getting gold for this weapon is not even the kills at all. But however, if you do want to know that, Mastery 1 is 10 kills, Mastery 2 is 100 kills, Mastery 3, 200, Mastery 4, 500, Mastery 5, 1000. And in total, you're looking at 1,810 kills. But what's going to hurt you the most is the 130,000 GP that you will need to pay for gold. But that's everything that I wanted to cover for the Road to Gold for the K2C. Now, part three will be the M4ACC. And if you see me on Twitter, you already know that I have that. So this one will be much faster. Sorry for the long wait. I do want to apologize for that. But I also want to announce the winner of part one of this giveaway. Again, this is going to come in three parts. But the winner for part one goes to Nexies. I messaged you on Twitter, so hopefully you can get back to me as soon as possible so you can claim your reward. Part 2, if you do want to enter in this giveaway, just comment down below, Overlord. Comment giveaway, Overlord, in the comment section down below, and you'll be entered in, in the next giveaway. But, that's everything I wanted to talk about today, and I'll see you guys in the next one, and please, always, stay safe.